count us down? No. Okay, so we can just start when we've done that. Okay. One second. All right, good evening. Today is Thursday, September 15th for our um, city council meeting. Um, just by note, um, city council president Jim Nash um, is traveling and out of town tonight. My name is Karen Foster. I'm the city council vice president, and I will be presiding over the meeting this evening. Um, and we will begin with a roll call. Councillor Elkins. Here. Councillor Foster. Here. Councillor Gore. She's not present. Also traveling, I understand. Yes, he's traveling. Um, Councillor Jarrett. Here. Councillor Labarge. Here. Councillor Maori. She needs to be a co-host. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay. Got it. Yes, here. Okay. Councillor Moulton. Here. And Councillor Nash, as we know, is traveling. And um, Councillor Perry. Here. Madam, or Council President, you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to announce that this meeting and all who are in it are being audio and video recorded. And next up, I wanna make an announcement about two upcoming public hearings. First announcement of public hearing on 22.157, National Grid Verizon Poll Petition for Willow Street, per Mass General Law 166, chap, Section 22, the Northampton City Council will hold a public hearing on Thursday, October 6, 2022, at 7 p.m. on National Grid Verizon's petition to install one stub pole on Willow Street. Instructions for accessing the hearing may be found on the October 6, 2022 City Council agenda to be posted on Northampton.gov no later than 48 hours prior to the meeting. The City Council will hear all persons who wish to be heard therein. And we have another hearing coming up on another poll petition, announcement of public hearing on 22.152, National Grid poll petition to relocate one poll and remove another on Holly Street. That hearing will be on Thursday, October 6, 2022 at 7.15 p.m. on National Grid's petition to relocate one poll, poll number 17, and remove one poll, poll number 18, on Holly Street. S similar to the other one, instructions for accessing the hearing may be found on the October 6, 2022 City Council agenda posted on the City website no later than 48 hours prior to the meeting. The City Council, again, will hear all persons who wish to be heard therein. Which brings us to item four, which is public comment. If you wish to make a public comment, you can use the raise hand feature under the reactions tab or star nine if you're calling by phone. If you're having trouble raising your hand, you may use the chat feature to let me know that, or I will also be looking for virtual hands. Our meeting's not that big tonight. We will only use the chat feature for technical questions as it would violate the spirit and potentially the letter of open meeting law to receive public comment privately by chat. If you wish to make a written public comment, you may do so by email at citycouncil at northamptonma.gov. It would be sent to all counselors and become a part of the public record. I will invite people to make a comment in the order in which hands are raised. Before you begin, please state your name and your city or town for the public record. Councillor Maori was helping out tonight and she will unmute you. Um, and to ensure equal access for everyone, council limits comments to two minutes per person. You do not need to use the full two minutes, but if you do, our timer will go off and I will ask you to finish your thought. If you use the gallery view, you'll be able to see a timer uh, to help you track your time. According to council rules, we do not respond during public comment. It is your turn to speak. While your comments should be directed to us, you will understand when we do not respond. Our rules also state that counselors and members of the public shall conduct themselves with civility and respect at all times. Your speech is a protected constitutional right that we ask you to wield with consideration and respect for all. The public space that grants you the freedom to speak is shared equally by everyone. Also, according to open meeting law, if someone is disrupting a public meeting, they may be removed. You may speak on any topic. It doesn't need to be on the agenda. I ask that all but the council turn off their video during the meeting until called upon, as only the person recognized has the floor, and all comments will be directed to the council. 
You can also view this meeting on channel 15 or by on Northampton Open Media's YouTube channel and other platforms. Next hand I see is Christina Divigard. I said quickly. Hello, thank you very much. And you pronounced it just fine. Um, I'm Christina Divigard. I live at uh, 79 Island Road here in Northampton. And before I begin, I would first like to acknowledge that Northampton was founded and built on unceded homelands of the Nunatuck community and other native peoples. And for these lands and the waters of the native nations on which we now reside, I offer my gratitude. I also offer grat my gratitude to you, our city councilors, um, and I appreciate the service you bring to our city. So thank you. Um, I'm here today to talk about something that happened on our street on September 2nd. Um, there was extensive personal property that was damaged and destroyed um, all the way down our street. Trees as far as 15 feet in uh, into private land were uprooted and hacked to shreds. Shrubs and flowers were mowed down. And you know these included native species like the wildflower gardens one of our neighbors diligently tends to. Um, it included a sapling planted right across our street um, that um, I, I thought would always be there to remind me of the neighbor who lived there who passed away a few months earlier. But all of these were destroyed by an employee of the City Department of Public Works. What was destroyed and how seems totally arbitrary and it extended well beyond any need to address a hazard of, of any kind. There's no public land on Island Road. Every deed clearly indicates that our property boundaries are at, on, or in Island Road. I have found no documentation of any easements granted to the city beyond the road itself. The question for which I, I come to you today, which I understand you may not be able to answer, but for which I do seek an answer, is under what ordinance, bylaw, code, or statute is the indiscriminate and arbitrary destruction of personal property without prior notice or consent of the property owner allowed. And my closing thought is it just really seems ironic that we live in a city where, where we, we make it a priority to plant young trees and you know make our city a, as natural as it can be. And the city's planting trees in some parts of town, but destroying them in others. And it really makes no sense to me. And the question I presented to you at, at a time that it is appropriate, I would like an answer. Um, but in the meantime, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Christina. And thank you uh, for, for jumping in. My son turned on a Netflix show, so I apologize for freezing in that moment. Um, Next up, we have Jackie Balance. Uh, no, Susan Taberge is next. Oh, my screen is showing things perhaps in a different order from yours. Um, in, in my order of hands raised, Jackie, I've, I've got you. Um, keep me on track. Oh, if you're ready, we'll go ahead in that order. So I apologize if that's out of order for others. Okay, I, I will. I read the agenda. And there is a ordinance, oh. a letter to the legislature. Jackie, that... can you just um, state your name and city? Oh, town yeah, Jackie record? Balance Florence. Thank you. Um, I read on the agenda that there's an or ordinance written as a to address the state legislature to give us <clears throat> home rule to um, eliminate fossil fuels and new construction. And I want to say that this is a really a big breakthrough for implementing the Resilience and Regeneration Plan. And I hope someone will explain just how it's going to work because I heard that other communities who asked for home rule are in a queue to get approved 
put by our state legislature that's dragging their feet. I, I don't know if that's true. Susan may know more about it than I do, but I do support limiting fossil fuels going forward. Uh, it's do or die time. Also, I'm also very moved by Christina's story. I hope she gets an answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jackie. And just so I don't risk calling anybody in an order that you're not expecting, I think my order got out of, um, changed maybe when my screen froze, but I have Denise and then Susan, then Saul, then Darcy. So give you a second to, to be prepared. Um, so next up is we have Denise Lello. If you could say your city, your name and city or town. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm just turning on my video so you can see me. Uh, <laughs> um, my name is Denise Lello. I live at 35 Woodlawn Avenue in Northampton. And I am also speaking in support of order 22.173, an order for special legislation relative to fossil fuel free new construction in the city of Northampton. That's being presented by the mayor and councilors Maiori and Elkins. I urge the council to support this important petition to the General Court of Massachusetts to allow Northampton to require that all new construction and substantial renovations use electricity for space heating and cooling, water heating, cooking, laundry, and other energy needs. <clears throat> the federal and state government are moving too slowly to address the climate crisis in which we live. This is a health issue as well as a climate issue since the extraction, transportation, and use of methane exposes vulnerable people, including those with heart disease, asthma, and pregnant persons to negative impacts. I have great admiration for the foresight being shown by local governments such as Berkeley, California, New York City, New York, as well as many smaller municipalities who have already instituted bans on fossil fuel sources of heating and cooling and other uses in new construction. Northampton should join the many communities in Eastern Massachusetts, including Boston, Lexington, Newton, Somerville, and others who have already filed or expressed intention to file similar petitions to give us the authority to institute a similar plan. Buildings that are built now will be with us for 50 to 100 years, and retrofitting buildings for electrification is far more costly than using the existing technology to build fossil fuel free now. I'm proud of the mayor and councilors, Mayor and Alkins, have been, and taking the lead on this critical issue, and I hope you'll all support the order. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Um, and next up, we have Susan Thaberge. I said that correctly. Thaberge, but that was very close. Thank you so much. Well, I um, thank you for allowing me to speak. Susan Thaberge, I live in Florence, and I am recently here just over about two and a half years, and very happy to be in Northampton. And I, um, our first two speakers on this issue, Jackie and Denise, were very eloquent. I won't repeat what they have to say. And I would like to thank the first speaker for the land acknowledgement. That was, that was great. Um, I, so I won't repeat what um, Denise and Jackie said, just to speak briefly to the fact that I, don't, I know I don't have to tell anybody in this room that we are in the midst of, of just cataclysmic changes in our ecosystem and our this the climate um, disruption that's already hitting us is horrendous. Think of Pakistan right now with that immense flooding is just one example. And um, this is like dirty polluted water that's turning cities, you know, towns and cities into islands. They're cut off now. Pe wells are flooded. I mean, you know, this is like just a, sort of a snapshot of what's to come. And um, even though we know we have built in already some major changes, every, to, to every one tenth of a degree that we can make a difference makes it a little less cat cat catastrophic. And so, you know, we're pushing really hard on the state front. We have some good legislation on the federal level, but 
it is really clear to me and to many others that cities, municipalities are absolutely key to really moving this forward. And Northampton is just the city that, that you know, people are aligned, they're enthusiastic, and um, we're in a great position to, um, you know, really request to be one of the cities with home rule petition. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. Um, next up, we have Darcy. Hi, um, I want to echo what Denise, Jackie, and Susan oh. just said. Darcy, can you just say your name and city or town? I'm sorry, Darcy, Darcy Sweeney Florence. Uh, I want to thank Councillors Maori and Elkins for submitting the home rule petition that would allow Northampton to require that new construction be fossil fuel free. The climate crisis demands that every level of government do everything possible to reduce emissions as rapidly as possible. And this would be a giant step in the right direction. So I hope the councilors will vote in favor of this home rule petition. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy. And next up we have Saul. Saul Perlmutter. Florence, um, I'd like to thank Councillor Maori, my councillor, and uh, Councillor Elkins for submitting the Home Rule petition to the legislature to require new construction to be fossil free, fossil fuel free. Moving to require cleanly generated electric energy in new buildings and major renovations is a positive, healthy, common sense step for our city to take. I strongly urge you to please vote in favor of this petition. Thank you. Thank you, Saul. Um, and just looking, I do not see any other raised hands. I'm looking on both screens, I just want to make sure I catch everybody. Okay, um, Joyce Rosenfeld. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi Joyce. We, we can hear you. Can you just, yep. Yeah, I'm in the dark. And I'm so sorry. Um, I'm also calling to support the home rule resolution. Um, can you just, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you just say your name and city or town for the record? I'm sorry. Joyce Rosenfeld. Um, and I live in Florence. And I'm here to support the home rule um, uh, resolution that uh, has been brought forth tonight and um, hope that we are in our towns fossil fuel free as soon as possible. This is a good start. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Okay, looking through the screen one more time. I don't see other hands going once. Okay, then thank you everyone uh, for coming out. And we are going to move on to item five, announcements from councilors and the mayor. Um, let me know if you have something, Councilor Labarge. Oh, you're muted, Councilor Labarge. Thank you. Um, just a reminder, we have something very special coming this Saturday, September 17th, the Doozy Doo Parade, 11 o'clock a.m. to be down at the North Hampton Center of Arts. You're marching to the Pulaski Park. The Grandish Marshals are Kel um, Kelsey Flynn and our one and only Bill Dwight. As a city councilor, I was going to be in it, and I was going to be the, the politician again, which I was with Bill Dwight and our new mayor, Gina Louise Shearer, and also another councilor, but she's on vacation. But what had happened here was I have a very dear resident, Sheila Thompson, 
who attended Northampton High School with several of my residents and I in Ward 6, and she had passed away. So her memorial service is this Saturday, so I cannot attend that parade. I feel that I have known Sheila and her husband, Bill, for over 22 years. And being one of my colleagues at Northampton High School was a preference. So, but I did donate and I sent a check to them for the parade. So I'm gonna wish everybody have a lot of fun and everybody will have a lot of fun. We're gonna see many different types of outfits out there and joy and happiness after two years. Also too, I want a reminder that to keep in mind on Florence Night Out on Saturday, September 24th, 2022 from four to 7 p.m. There's arts, music, dance, film, poetry, food and community. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Are there other one minute announcements? Counselor Mary. There we go. Yes, I just wanted to um, let folks know we're having a special joint council uh, meeting this upcoming Wednesday, 5 p.m. virtual uh, between the, fin the Finance Committee and the Council Committee on Community Resources to look at the um, CPA funding of the historic preservation of the facade of the St. Cantius Church. There's been a lot of interest in that, so I wanna make sure uh, folks don't know, know about it. You can contact any one of us. Uh, uh, the link will be on the, the city calendar under Wednesday. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Uh, I actually have... <laughs> Two, Mayor, or, or actually, Mayor, why don't you go ahead? No, me? Okay. I will jump in. I've got, I've got two announcements. I just um, think one of them, Mayor, you may share. Um, I wanted to announce that the city's ARPA funds uh, application is open. Was that it? I don't want to steal your thunder. Okay. Yeah. Um, the application, the city um, has $4 million in ARPA funds that will be community directed. Councillor Moulton and I both um, serve on the commission that is um, helping to advise this process. The request for proposals is out. Um, proposals are due October 14th. Um, there's much more information on the city website and there will be upcoming um, info sessions um, to assist uh, interested applicants. Those are coming up Wednesday, September 21st at 6 p.m. in city council chambers. That's a hybrid meeting. So there's also an option to participate remotely. Um, as well as Wednesday, September 28th at 2 p.m., also a hybrid meeting in council chambers. Um, so I wanna make sure folks knew about that. And then my second announcement, um, Councillor Elkins, I, I see your hand as well. Um, there is a vacancy on the Community Preservation Committee, um, a elected um, a slot on that committee, the individual serving is moving out of Northampton. And so, um, Northampton City Council, I'll just read the announcement. Due to a resignation, the Northampton City Council is seeking candidates to fill a vacancy in one of the two elected positions on the nine member Community Preservation Committee. The Community Preservation Committee is responsible for making recommendations for how Community Preservation Act funds are spent in the four CPA program areas, community housing, historic preservation, open space, and recreation. Um, per charter, vacancies in elected positions on this committee shall be filled by the City Council. A person appointed to fill such vacancy shall serve only until a person is elected at the next regular city election and is sworn to the office. Anyone interested is asked to fill out an application for appointment on the city's website by 5 p.m. Thursday, September 29th. Interviews will be conducted by members of the city services committee, which will make a recommendation for appointment to the full city council. The city council shall act to fill this vacancy at its regular meeting on Thursday, October 20th, 2022. And I realized during that announcement, I said a lot of information that will be coming up later on in the council meeting as well. Um, so we'll, we'll flush this out, but wanted to make sure folks know. Um, oh, good, and Councillor Perry, who has internet problems, you've made it back. Um, Councillor Elkins. Uh, I, uh, I decided to make this announcement uh, during Councillor Perry's uh, absence. Uh, 
Uh, so I'll, I'll maybe I'll be stealing his uh, thunder, but I just wanted to mention that on uh, Monday, Community Resources will be having a meeting. It's, it's a regularly scheduled meeting, but we're going to be having a roundtable discussion about the impact of retail marijuana sales on community resources. I'm not sure if I'm looking at the most uh, up-to-date um, announcement, but we it's going to be a panel discussion with uh, community-based agencies and industry representatives to learn how the growing number of marijuana retailers in Northampton has uh, impacted business prevention and recovery services and young people's attitudes toward cannabis and actual cannibal, cannab, can, cannabis use, not cannibal. Uh, participants um, thus far, and I'm not sure if all of these are 100% lined up, but like I said, it's the most up to date, but uh, participants thus far will include Susan Stubbs, um, President and CEO of ServiceNet, Heather Warner, Manager of Strategic Partner, Strategic Planning Initiative for Families and Youth, SPIFI, uh, the SPIFI Co uh, Coalition for Collaborative Educational Services, and Carolyn Johnson, um, SPIFI's Public Health and Data Evaluation Specialist, Lawyer, and Cannabis Consulta, Ezra Parzibuk, <laughs> and Vulcan Politol, and owner of Molina's Restaurant and Honey Dispensary. Um, there's going to be a, a couple of brief presentations and then uh, followed by questions and answers and an opportunity for public comment. So we know this is something that folks are uh, interested in talking about and we've uh, put together um, uh, an exciting uh, and interesting and informative group of folks um, to talk about the issue uh, in community resources meeting on Monday. Thank you, Councilor Elkins. And I'll jump in with a third announcement because I can tonight. October 3rd, the City Council Committee on City Services will be hosting a similar discussion, um, but from City Services. Um, so we're still putting that agenda together, but we'll be inviting uh, relevant city department heads to come and speak at that meeting as well, which I realize happens before our next council meeting. So I wanted folks to know that's Monday, October 3rd at 4.30 p.m. Now, Mayor. Thank you. Good evening, councilors. Um, it's great to be with you. Um, and thank you for all of those announcements. Um, yes, thank you so much, uh, Vice President Foster, for sharing the information um, about both items, but um, uh, particularly about the ARPA Community Recovery um, application that is now open. I'm really grateful for you sharing that. And I and I really I ask all councilors to please share that as far and as wide as you can. Um, we want everyone to know that these community recovery funds um, are available and um, to if if they have something um, that they would like to seek uh, them for to please, please apply. Um, and thank you to the counselors who are serving on that committee. I know how hard you're working. I'm very grateful. Um, uh, so I do I have a sort of a brief communication that I'd like to share. Um, uh, about something that's on your consent agenda, but I wanted to take this opportunity. I haven't yet had an opportunity to speak to my appointment of Carolyn Mish as Director of Planning and Sustainability. So um, if you'll indulge me, I just wanted to speak um, briefly on that appointment and to Carolyn's remarkable qualifications. Sorry, it's very loud where I am. Um, qualifications, experience, um, and her dedication to Northampton. Carolyn's experience and knowledge having served Northampton for 22 years is of course invaluable, but um, as important to me is her vision and her plans for community engagement, her commitment to sustainability and climate change resilience, her commitment to not just following but revising and keeping active the sustainable Northampton plan and its embedded plans, um, and her enthusiasm to keep pushing to think really creatively about how to create affordable housing. Um, so I'm, I'm very, um, I'm very proud and excited to put forward this appointment. Um, I want to also really thank the screening committee who, who worked on, um, on this appointment and including the two counselors who sat on it, counselors, Jared and Elkins, um, that screening committee very carefully reviewed the applications we received from casting a very wide net search and, um, interviewed finalists and then unanimously and I'll say enthusiastically put forward Director Mish as their recommendation. Um, I fully agreed with them and was very happy to offer her the position. And I can say that it's it's been an extremely busy summer and Carolyn has very beautifully transitioned um, into the interim role when Wayne, when Wayne Fine left and then to the appointed role of director. Um, so I'm, I'm extremely proud to work with Carolyn and I am, so grateful to have 
a professional of her caliber taking over as director of planning and sustainability. But additionally, I am grateful to work with such a fine, thoughtful person who cares so deeply about her community and our larger world and has dedicated her career to making it better, safer, greener, and more accessible for all. So I thank the council very much for your careful consideration of her appointment this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, other councilors, any announcements? Okay. Uh, Mayor, did you have a presentation for us tonight? I didn't see anything there, but. I do not, thank you. Okay. Then what, before we move on to the consent agenda that um, we now know is coming, um, I'm going to call a five minute recess so I can put myself back together in my new spot where I have better internet. Um, so it's 7.31 now and we'll reconvene at 7.36.
is back. Um, Liz, are you all set if we resume? Okay. So next up, we are at item. Thank you, everybody, for that, that brief pause. I feel like I have all my things together now. Um, we are on item seven, the consent agenda, as a reminder that there shall be no debate or discussion by any city councilor regarding any item on the consent agenda beyond asking questions for simple clarification. But if you have any removals after I read the items on the consent agenda, you're welcome to request a removal um, to allow for debate or questioning. Um, so the consent agenda includes item A, the September 1st, 2022 minutes, B, 22.160 appointments to various committees, all positive recommendations from the City Services Committee on September 6, 2022. For the Board of Assessors, we have Sean Sullivan, uh, term August 2022 to June 2025 to fill a vacancy. For the Board of Health, Janet Grant, term August 22 to June 2025, and that is to fill a vacancy. To the Community Preservation Committee, Beverly Bates, term August 2022 to June 2025, as the Housing Partnership Representative. Historical Commission, Greg De DeBrindisi, term August 2022 to June 2025 as the Realtor Representative from the Realtor Association of the Pioneer Valley. For the Human Rights Commission, Diana Stallone, term August 2022 to June 2025 to fill a vacancy. And Angela DeSouza, term August 2022 to June 2025 also to fill a vacancy. And to the Parks and Rec Commission, Thomas Dunphy, term July 2022 to June 2025, that is a reappointment. Item C, 22.162, the appointment of Carolyn Misch as Director of Office of Planning and Sustainability. That received a positive recommendation from the City Services Committee on September 6, 2022. Item D, 22.166, in order to suspend parking fees on certain days in second reading. That was referred to the consent agenda at our last meeting. And item E, 22.174, appointment to fill vacancy in elected position on Community Preservation Committee for referral to city services. I'll read the process note here. Per chapter section 5.4, whenever a vacancy occurs on the Community Preservation Committee, the city council shall within 30 days following the date of that vacancy, act to fill the vacancy. A person appointed to fill a vacancy by the city council shall serve only until a person is elected at the next regular city election and is sworn to the office. So that, those are the items on our consent agenda. Are there any removals? Councilor Fulton. Uh, request removal of uh, item C, the appointment of Carolyn Mish. Okay. Um, I, are, are there any other removals? I am going to request the removal of item E, 22.174, appointment to fill vacancy in the elected position on Community Preservation Committee. Okay, which brings us back to the consent agenda with item C, the appointment of Carolyn Mish, and item E, the appointment to fill the vacancy removed. Um, so we'll be voting on the consent agenda minus those two removals. Uh, Laura, can you take a roll call, please? Um, do we need a motion and a second? Uh, move to approve. The Second. Agenda. Second. Okay. Um, Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor yeah. Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. I think there was another yes there, and it was a bark. <laughs> okay. okay so that did we get everybody laura yes okay we did and the bark okay thank you so that that passes and then uh removal we had item c 22.162 the appointment of carolyn mish Councilor moulton did you want to speak to that Thank you. Uh, I, I asked for removal so that I could speak uh, in favor of the appointment of Carolyn Mish. I think that it's sound management practice uh, when we have a strong internal candidate, particularly for a job as important as uh, director of planning and sustainability uh, to promote from within. 
I think it not only do we retain the the uh, skills and and institutional knowledge of that person, but it also uh, sends a positive, it, it boosts morale by sending a positive message, not only to that department, but other city employees that the city recognizes and rewards uh, excellent work. Um, at the same time, even, even when we have a strong internal candidate, I think it's, it's a good practice to, uh, to measure that person against the unknown, against others who might be out there who might uh, want to uh, apply or be attracted to a job like this and might be a good fit. That happened, of course, in this case, as the mayor mentioned. Um, uh, there were three finalists who were interviewed, and one of those was a person from outside of Massachusetts. Uh, so the uh, uh, Carolyn Mish received the uh, not only the unanimous uh, endorsement of the screening committee, uh, that included uh, a couple of my colleagues from the council, other municipal officials and community members, uh, but also, of course, the uh, a positive recommendation from city services, which is no surprise given her 22 years in Northampton and uh, her deep knowledge of uh, the planning process and the community's values and goals here, as well as her prior experience uh, as a uh, as a municipal planner in North Carolina and a state planner in, in Colorado, uh, but I've had the opportunity over the last eight and a half months as city councilor to uh, observe and work with uh, Director Mish, um, and she's communicated clearly with me about often complex issues uh, in a way that is uh, understandable, and uh, she has been responsive to my questions and as importantly to questions uh, from my constituents. And uh, I under, I, my, my, uh, my observation of during that period is that she has a, not only a, the, the vision uh, that the mayor mentioned, but also a, a deep commitment to community engagement. And for all of those reasons, uh, my vote in favor of her will be uh, cast enthusiastically. And I look forward to working with her in the coming months as she leads the uh, planning department in Northampton. Okay, so I'd be looking for a motion. Oh, Councilor Elkins. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, as long as this item has been yeah. removed, I also would like to just uh, briefly speak um, uh, favorably um, to uh, uh, soon to be uh, director Mish, not just interim director. Um, I've worked with Carolyn uh, on the uh, the planning board um, during my uh, tenure on that uh, body, um, and of course that is a fully volunteer uh, body, um, and learned so much uh, both in terms of procedure of how those meetings um, are to be uh, are to be run to um, fulfill the obligations that that uh, that that particular body has, and also um, just uh, tremendous amounts that I learned regarding. The, the direction of our policies uh, in terms of sustainability and city planning and, and zoning and zoning uh, reform, uh, which in turn turned into a, a significant uh, reason why I ran um, to serve on city council um, because of, of what I learned in that role uh, from uh, Carolyn and, uh, and her predecessor, Wayne, and uh, what I found uh, so rewarding about uh, doing service alongside um, public uh, servants uh, like Carolyn. So I have found her to be incredibly informative and clear and concise and deeply knowledgeable and passionate about um, our city. And so I'm gonna be delighted to cast uh, my vote um, tonight and so that she will be with us and serving the city for many years to come. Thank you, Councilor Elkins. Did anybody else wish to speak? Okay, then I'd be looking for a motion. I move to approve Carolyn Mish as Director of Planning and Sustainability. Second. Okay, and Laura, roll call. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. La Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. 
Councillor Perry. Yes. And Councillor Elkins. Yes. yes. So that, that passes um, seven to nothing. And then the, the next item um, off for removal, I took it off. So I'll just explain why is item E22.174, appointment to fill vacancy in elected position on community preservation committee for referral to city services. Right now what's on the consent agenda is just a referral to city services. I just wanted to name that later on in the agenda we'll be seeing an ordinance that um, sort of instructs how city council will go about filling this vacancy. So just wanted to explain what that was. Um, so if there's any questions, um, if not, I'll take a motion on that one. Move to approve. Second. Item E. Okay, Councilor made, uh, um, <laughs> moved by Councilor Mayori, <laughs> seconded by Councilor Elkins. Um, and Laura, we can do a roll call on that. You're muted, Laura. Thanks. Okay. Um, Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. And Councillor Foster. Yes. Okay, so that passes um, seven to zero which brings us up to item eight, financial orders on first reading. Um, item A is 22.170, an order authorizing expenditures from accessible parking fines. Um, again, this is first reading. And Keith, I believe you are here to speak to that. Yes, uh, thank you all. Um, so um, this, is, um, this issue is uh, really raised uh, by a resident of the uh, New South Street Apartments. I believe it's 22 to 34 New South Street. Um, it's um, it's an apartment uh, complex. There's 18 units there. Oh, Keith, um, um, I'm sorry to interrupt. This is the financial order on authorizing expenditures. To make oh, I'm, I'm fines. sorry. I think we'll get to the New South Street later yes. on. Um, Thank you. My, I apologize. Uh, yes, so... Uh, last year, two years ago, um, City Council, um, by request of the Dis Disability Commission, uh, authorized the use, uh, I believe, uh, uh, Councilor Barge, uh, she was very instrumental in this, uh, but to take the fines for people uh, parking in accessible um, parking spaces, to use that money um, uh, to pay for um, uh uh, assisted listening, or excuse me, translation services at meetings. Uh, this order uh, would um, now uh, include um, paying the architectural and design fees uh, to implement the um, ADA transition plan. Uh, and it's really just for one project um, kind of uh, that came out of the transition plan. Um, and that is to um, make City Hall municipal building and the um, 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 where DPW is uh, that building accessible. Um, there's several doors, um, several of the service windows that are not compliant with the ADA. Um, and there's a, a grant through the state that we would, I would like to apply at the end of the month. So uh, I've got a cost estimate uh, from um, uh, uh, a designer uh, that would, and I can now use that to apply for the grant, um, but the grant does not pay for the design. So the hard costs, the labor to implement it will be paid for by the grant if we get it, uh, but this money, um, this authorization would pay for the design so that we can um, just, um, and it would be about 12% um, of that. So it might be in the 10 to $15,000 range. Um, and that is gonna pull from the revolving fund, which is around, uh, the balance is around 35 to 40,000 right now. Um, currently, we only use that for um, getting translation services for people who request at city meetings. Uh, and right now we're only using that, uh, I since I've, uh, been the ADA coordinator. We've only had one one person 
uh, at the Disability Commission kind of on a recurring basis asked for that. And that's, we're paying an hourly, hourly rate of a translator for about $105. So um, we're not in kind of uh, any, um, we're not in danger of uh, extinguishing that fund for a while. And it seems to be, unfortunately, it seems to be replenishing uh, quite frequently, so. I hope I did ex explain that well, but I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. Great, it looks like um, Councilor Labarge and then Councilor Jarrett. Thank you. We, um, we had Nathan Cheng who filled in for Keith, which he knows. And we had a, a lengthy talk about this order. And it's absolutely necessary. There's no question about it. We were able to find out exactly how much we had in our account. I think it was that 40,000, correct, Keith? Right. Anyways, there was great concerns and I had great concerns too, because at that point, Carol and Mish really wasn't sure what that price was gonna be. And the Commission on Disabilities, when I went to have that order put in place, we had no money, no money at all. So another counselor and I, Counselor Eugene Tacey, at that point from Ward 7, really stepped in and him and I designed an ordinance with Mayor Narthowitz to make it happen. We opened the doors because we had no money, no money at all. So our concerns is we definitely, and I told the commission how important that no matter what, we need to open the doors and we need to move on and improve this. Once we find out how much that money is going to be, if it's gonna be 15 or 20,000, that's fine. If we go over that, we need to have some money in that account so that we can do what we want to do with the Commission on Disabilities. There's many other things that we're looking at. So anyways, I highly agree of, of approving this order. It is absolutely necessary so we can open the doors so Keith can move on and we can make this happen. So thank you, counselors. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Councilor Labarge. Councilor Jarrett, you had your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Um, sorry if I missed this, but do we have a sense of uh, you know, like how much each year we, we take in in, um, in the fines? I can get that number for you, um, but uh, I believe Charlene uh, would, uh, would have a better sense of that, um, but... Um, even since the last time I checked it a few months ago, it's gone up a few thousand dollars. Um, you know. we, can, right. we can get that number for you, counselors. Um, Charlene's not here this evening because um, she has an exciting family event coming up uh, this weekend, but um, uh, I can, we can get that and get it to you. Appreciate that because Carolyn mentioned something about 40,000 in it right now. Other counselors' questions? Okay, I have I have one, um, and maybe without Charlene here, we don't know what what is the fine for parking an accessible spot? A hundred. Hundred. Yeah. I'd like to see it go up higher. Okay, that is a. I know. I mean, we've done so for another much. Day. We've done so much with the money that we have in there the new audio, you know, equipment for people with hard of hearing and so forth, we're coming a long way. The Braille, that was a biggie of having Braille in some of the restaurants here in the city of Northampton and working with one of the owners of um, the restaurant on Strong Avenue, Eastside Grill. And if it wasn't for Daniel Cuso, he was so helpful going out to restaurants and getting support to make it happen for us. So the money's there. We use it very carefully for people with disabilities. Okay, and Keith, I, I just have, oh, go ahead. Did you want to respond? No, I just, um, uh, just want to thank the mayor for, um, it was kind of like this little very last minute on us 
uh, on me and writing it and uh, she was coming off vacation and I was bugging Carolyn to get this in front of the mayor. Uh, so uh, she was very happy to look it over and uh, enthusiastic, enthusiastically say yes. Um, uh, and then disability commission, I was not there, but they were um, uh, they were already uh, on board with it. So I just wanna thank them for that. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. I'm, I'm thrilled to support this and that the fines will be used this way. <laughs> Keith, I wanted to check with you. I didn't see a note on the agenda, but you mentioned your grant deadline being the end of the month. Is this, is there a time urgency or are we okay if, if this- No, is no, okay? it's it's totally fine. Um, the more urgent part was me getting the actual um, uh, the cost um, okay. from the um, cost estimator. Um, so it's at 69, or I'm sorry, $59,000. Um, it might go up a little bit, um, but average, it's 12% of that, 10 to 12% of that. So you're looking at $7,000 um, if it doesn't go up dramatically. So that would be uh, that $7,000 that would be drawn from the revolving fund. Uh, but I just need that number to put in the grant um, and to say these are kind of our line items. Um, and I, I, our scope of work, you know, is uh, for offices and this amount of chair, uh, this amount of doors and things like that. So, but if, um, if I feel confident that you guys will support this, then I'm going to apply for the grant. Okay, counselors, any other questions? Okay, I'm just going to jump in real quick to say this is um, a really exciting financial order. I'm really glad to see this in the city's focus and the potential to make the DPW facilities and, and city hall accessible to people who have disabilities. There's nothing that says more to our everybody in our community that they belong than being able to access the spaces where things happen. Um, so it's it's really important and I'm, I'm really glad to see this. Um, so council, we have a decision to make about whether this goes to the consent agenda or the finance committee. Council? Council LaBarge? Yes, I would like to make a motion to move this to the consent agenda. Second. Okay, so motion made by Councillor Labarge and seconded by Councillor Moulton. Um, Laura, can we get a roll call on referral of this order to the consent agenda for the next meeting? Sure. Um, Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Maori? Yes. Councillor Moulton? Yes. Councillor Perry? Yes. Councillor Elkins? Yes. Councillor Foster? Yes. And Councillor Jarrett? Yes. Okay, so that motion passes seven to nothing, um, which brings us to item B, financial order on first reading, in order to reprogram funds to purchase a scanner printer. Um, I had, I, I, I see that Charlene isn't here, but Mayor, did you want to speak to this one? I absolutely do want to speak to this one. Well, let me pull it up. Um, so this may be an instance where sort of the wacky market and um, supply chain issues have worked in our favor. Um, so you may remember from the capital improvement plan, the building department was um, replacing this year a 20, um, an older 2013 um, Subaru gas powered, fully gas powered Subaru with a, a, a hybrid vehicle. And when they were able to actually secure the hybrid vehicle, which is not easy right now, um, but in doing so and trading in the Subaru, we actually got a great deal more for the Subaru than um, we expected because as you may know, the, um, the used car market is incredibly hot right now. So we um, have some, a balance of money remaining um, that the building department would very much like to use to purchase a scanner printer for oversized plans and maps. And so um, they produce a lot of these plans, but also um, there are certain documents that we must retain. And um, as you can imagine, they take up a lot of room and we have been looking at a way to digitize those. To send them out to be digitized would cost significantly more than purchasing this, print, this uh, scanner, which we then could keep using for plans going forward. So they would like to reprogram these funds to purchase a scanner um, that will greatly help them with 
the pile, the stacks and piles of these plans that are now all over the place and um, be, we'll be able to retain these records digitally. Um, so that is that kind of happy story about those funds. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor, any questions or councillors, any questions about this one? No. Uh, Councillor Labarge. Yes, I would like to make a motion to move this to the consent agenda. This is extremely important in order to do what they have to do with the large maps and oversight plans. Okay. Okay, a uh, motion made by Councillor Labarge, seconded by Councillor Jarrett. Um, any discussion on that motion? Okay, Laura, can we get a roll call on a uh, referral to the consent agenda for the next meeting? Sure. Councillor Maori? Yes. Councillor Moulton? Yes. Councillor Perry? Yes. Councillor Elkins? Yes. Councillor Foster? Yes. Councillor Jarrett? Yes. And Councillor Labarge? Yes. Okay, so that motion passes seven to zero. Uh, we do not have any financial orders on second reading which brings us to section 10, orders. Um, first up, we have order 22.173, an order for special legislation relative to fossil fuel-free new construction in the city of Northampton on first reading. And I would like to invite these sponsors um, to discuss this or to introduce it. Council Mayor, I'll let you go first if you want, <laughs> unless you want me to go first. Go for it, Council Elkins. <laughs> um, so this was, um, uh, so this uh, is a home rule petition. Um, you know, we've, we of course don't have the ability to, um, as a city to, uh, to just change uh, the building codes in this way. So that we're, this is essentially a, a request to the state to allow us to be able to make this uh, change. Um, we in it, should this pass and it go on to this to the state level, um, we will be joining the ranks of several several other municipalities who have made several uh, similar home rule petition uh, request. Um, it's of vital importance uh, for us to make a significant uh, commitment to um, to to demonstrate. I'm sorry. Let me start over again. It's very important that we uh, that we demonstrate our uh, con commitment um, to meeting our uh, climate goals, our sustainability goals that were put forth, not only in the energy and sustainability plan, but also uh, I, I think every single one of us in here and, and the mayor uh, all have uh, voiced even higher aspirations and, and urgency um, to what we need. Uh, need to do. Um, and this is uh, incredibly important movement that we need to make. And we're doing it in the midst of a housing crisis, of course. So um, while the realities of home rule petitions and, and how those things go at the state level means it could be uh, that that uh, it, it could be a, a difficult point of, of persuasion um, to have this pass at the state level, by joining the ranks of other municipalities who are doing this, I, I think we send an important message um, to Boston um, to say that we're cities like Northampton are ready and uh, are ready to make the commitment, ready to 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 stand firm to do to make the hard changes um, that we need to do. So um, I think that's incredibly important. Um, it's just something that I folks have been talking uh, to me about and Councillor Mayori about. Um, I think for quite a long time, we've been talking about it in the Energy and Sustainability Committee. I also would like um, to do a shout out. She's traveling, so she's not able to be here today, but uh, Adele Franks, on the, who is also on the sustainability, uh, NESC uh, was has been incredibly vital in helping draft this, um, uh, this home rule petition and also keeping us educated and informed on the status of other municipalities, home rule petitions, and also other initiatives happening at state level that that may well get the whole state here. Um, so it, the best case scenario might be that this home rule petition ultimately doesn't um, pass or come back to us in this form because we're doing it at the state level, because everybody as a state 
um, as a common in the Commonwealth that we're we're making this commitment and that we are being uh, leaders by um, by joining this movement and 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 the impressing upon um, the folks in Boston the moral imperative um, that is how we meet this moment. Um, so I'm very proud um, and happy to be uh, uh, co-sponsoring this with Councilor Mayory. Councilor Mayory. Well said, thank you, Councilor Elkins. Yeah, this is, this is the kind of fundamental <clears throat> change and shift that we've been talking about for a while in Northampton. Um, but also, as you said, Councilor Elkins, it's also a great model for what we should be doing at every level. And to that end, I believe the Boston City Council passed the similar ordin ordinance this week. So um, I think, as you say, Council Elkins, I think, you know, there's a, there can be a, a growing momentum with this that, that could lead to, you know, the fundamental changes at the state level, which I'm very excited about. Mm -hmm. And um, the mayor, you know, as you know, with the home rule petition, we need to have the mayor on board. The mayor is here. She can certainly speak to it. Um, maybe I'll just let her. Speak. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Sorry, Councillor. Just Hunter? briefly, I, I also I want to add just one more thing before uh, the mayor uh, speaks in, which is to say, um, I do also want to emphasize that that no matter what the uh, sort of realities or the difficulty as a procedural matter of getting home rule petition through, I want to make it really clear that by being clear right about that, that we are ready to go and fight for this um, and that whatever it takes when it comes time to go to Boston and to talk to our legislators that we absolutely have the leader that we here have the leadership in, 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 uh, on Beacon Hill, I, I think, um, to make this case and we're prepared to do that. And that's part of this process. And as a advocate, I'm really excited about that part of it. <laughs> um, great, thanks to both uh, Councilors Elkin and Miori. Um, Elkins and Maori um, for uh, bringing this forward with me. I'm very thrilled to um, to work on this with you. And if this passes this evening, which I'm, I'm uh, confident and hopeful that it will, then working together to craft an ordinance that um, we would then send forward. So um, as you know, this is one of my top priorities and I'm, I'm just grateful to the, the two of you um, for helping push us forward in this way. And um, and you know, both creating housing and sustainability are, are two of the most important things that um, that we're working on at this moment. So, thank you both, and um, and I totally agree with you, Councillor Elkins, that we will um, we will be ready to support this and um, have a lot of win. But of course, you know, we heard people at public comment tonight. There is a huge our community is um, so behind this, and will. Um, I think dazzle or awe um, the legislature when this goes forward and uh, we'll be very prepared to um, to say how important it is for our community and of course for the Commonwealth. So thank you both very, very much for this. Great, um, I do see hands up. I just wanted a quick uh, clarification so that there's, there's not any panic tonight. This tonight's the introduction, right? And we would be voting on the order. Um, at our uh, meeting in October, just to be okay. Yes, and then then the the actual language would need to be crafted. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I will go back to those hands I saw. Councilor Jarrett. Thank you. Um, yeah, so there was interest in this uh, back when I was on the Energy and Sustainability Commission, and, and I'm really happy to see uh, the new uh, members of that commission moving this forward. Um, and I believe there's also an opportunity for 10 pilot communities to do this. And I think passing this solidifies our interest both in that and in a more permanent requirement. Um, and you know, the order states that all electric technology and net zero carbon building capability exists today is feasible and is cost effective. And so that's, that's an essential part of this is that um, we can do this and it doesn't uh, cost more than um, other options that are available to people in Northampton. Um, and on, so that's, it, it's just a, a wonderful benefit uh, from both, both perspectives um, of, of cost and climate. 
so um, I'm looking forward to this. And I did have a question. Um, so did Energy and Sustainability Commission already endorse this? Uh, it wasn't sponsored. It doesn't say it's sponsored by them as well, or but um, do they need to endorse it in any way? Hmm. I don't know if they if, if we need to, but um, sorry, Rachel. Um, oh, no, I, I don't know that I don't know that we need to, but it was definitely a, a product of 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 the, those meetings um, and and those discussions. Right. So I guess unless it's I guess it could be referred out to that, but I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know that I see a need to. It's just in the sense that it's would clearly be uh, supported and maybe redundant of other work we've already done, whether we put the official stamp on it or not. Right, yeah, so it's clear, it's clear that they, this is a product of that, that commission. So that, that sounds great. Um, <laughs> I don't think we need to refer back to them then. Since you've already discussed it there, uh, probably consider it then. Councilor Mayor, did you want to respond? It looked like you might have before. Oh, yeah, just to say that we did, we did, um, we did meet and, and it was overwhelmingly, it was unanimously positive. I'm just trying to remember, Councilor Elkins, since we actually voted. <laughs> we, we, right. we had the conversation about endorsing. Everyone said how wonderful it was, and I just don't remember if we actually voted. But yes, I think, I think we were embedded certainly by, um, by NESC and, um, and it, and initially by um, uh, Solicitor Seawald as well. And then, so yes, I'm feeling confident that yes, the NESC is behind us on this. And, and there were some substantive uh, edits and changes to sort of what we originally discussed. So right. we did substantive work on it already. I don't think it needs to go back unless there's some right. procedural reason it does. Councilor Labarge, I see your hand, but I realized that I omitted something that I think is really important at the beginning of this discussion. There's some incredibly powerful and strong language in this order. And I actually would like to invite the sponsors um, to read this. I, I think I know we've all read it ahead of time, but to have a chance to read it as, as a bit more framing of our discussion. And then Councilor Labarge, after that, I will go to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your patience. Do you want, want me to speak now? <laughs> no, um, we're, we're gonna have the sponsors read oh. this. Um, I would say real quick, it's not that quick, but I, I think it's, I think this is one worth reading into the record. Okay. Do you, do you want to go? Uh, why don't, why don't, uh, I'll, why don't we, I'll stop halfway and then you take it. Take okay, it when you like stop, that. I'll start. I'll hand you the baton. It feels good to do that. Okay. And, um, in order for special legislation relative to fossil fuel free new construction, the city of Northampton ordered that, whereas the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has a legally binding statewide requirement of 100% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions from 1990 levels by 2050 and 50% 50 by 2030, whereas Northampton has committed to a goal of net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. And whereas when in, the, the, in its latest 2022 report, the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change uh, forcefully stated without immediate and deep emissions reductions across sectors limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius is beyond reach, <clears throat> excuse me, whereas addressing climate change requires a just transition from fossil fuels to a decarbonized economy that is sustainable and equitable. Whereas building emissions represent over 40% of greenhouse gas emissions in the Commonwealth and over 70% of greenhouse gas emissions in the state's urban areas and therefore achieving the Commonwealth's mandatory greenhouse gas emissions target will require building decarbonization. Whereas the natural gas and propane are dangerous fossil fuels that generate indoor and outdoor air pollution, leak explosive gas from aging infrastructure and put the health and safety of the Commonwealth's current and future citizens at risk. Baton over to Councilor Elkins. Whereas methane leaks from gas production and transportation via pipelines cause significant, uh, cause significant environmental damage and contribute to climate disruption. Whereas gas stoves uh, produce harmful indoor emissions, including nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, and formaldehyde, each of which can cause various respiratory and other health ailments and cooking with 
and cooking with gas has been linked to asthma and other adverse health effects with children in low income households particularly affected. Data show that children have a 42% increased rate of asthma. Whereas all electric technology and net zero carbon building capability exists today is feasible and is cost effective. Whereas the availability of renewable energy is growing and mandated to continue to grow. Whereas under current regulations, towns and cities in Massachusetts do not have the authority to adopt building codes and regulations, including those that would allow elimination of fossil fuels from our buildings and meet our legally binding emission targets. Now, therefore, be it ordered, uh, voted uh, to petition the general court to the, end, uh, to the end that legislation be adopted precisely as follows. The general court may make, uh, I'm going to skip over that. Uh, um, I'm going to skip past the pro forma um, language to, do you want me to read the whole thing, the, all the way through? No, I'll, I'll defer to your judgment on that. Okay. Uh, just one second. Uh, I, I think no. I think the whereas is the is the 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 overarching um, big picture language. Uh, so unless uh, uh, unless can... Council uh, Foster, you want me to? Uh, no, I support that. Thank you. The whereas clause <laughs> is what I, I I felt were important to to include. Thank in you that. so much, Vice President uh, Foster. That was that felt good to do. <laughs> yeah. Thank you both. Thank you for indulging my step backwards there, Council Labarge. Yes, You've waited so you. long. Thank you. Um, I have to agree. The, there's a lot of powerful language in this home rule. And I'm really concerned because I'm hoping that we can move this along. And I think hearing about Boston, how they have already done something like this is critical, critical. We've been hearing this for how long of climate change? of going into moving quickly. And I'm very happy to see this. I have great concerns about the natural gas, the propane, how dangerous it is and so forth. And also with our children, the, the health conditions that happen with all this that's written in here. I wanna thank Adele Frank. I think she's an inspiration to that commission. And I wanna thank her for helping the two counselors with the language on this. So hearing if any reason, for any reason was the committee supporting this, they had somebody who's been working on this type for a long time, very knowledgeable with it. And we heard tonight some of the residents speak about moving this. So I wanna thank both of the counselors and the mayor for doing this and let's hope we can move it on. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Labarge. Um, other counselors? Okay, then I'll just weigh in uh, quickly. One to say, after the introduction of an order or resolution, it always feels a little bit anticlimactic to me how we how we move on without a vote. But um, I do wanna thank you, um, thank the co-sponsors very much for your work and for bringing this forward to council. And um, I'm excited um, to support this and um, to do what we might need to do on the local level to help move this through, um, you know, so that, so that this becomes an option for us in Northampton. So thank you very much for your work on this. Um, and that is going to bring us to item 11. Um, I, ordinances not yet referred. I'm gonna um, go ahead and pull this up um, and read this one as well. It's um, just so that we have a chance for the council to talk about it. Laura, if you could share your screen. Um, 22.171, an ordinance establishing procedures for filling vacancies and elected positions on the community preservation committee. Whereas the home rule charter for the city of Northampton provides that the city council shall fill a vacancy on the Community Preservation Committee pursuant to the process and procedures set forth by ordinance. Now, therefore, ordered that the Code of Ordinances of the City of Northampton shall be amended by amending section 22.2F as follows. F, should there be a vacancy or resignation in any of the Community Preservation Committee positions, the commissions, boards, or authorities who have appointment authority under this article shall appoint a new representative within 45 days of the first date of vacancy or resignation, Otherwise said vacancy may be filled by the city council. 
Should there be a vacancy in one of the two elected positions, such vacancy shall be filled as follows until the next regular city election. One, the vacant position shall be advertised in a manner that the president of the council deems likely to attract a diverse pool of qualified candidates. Two, the vacancy shall appear on the agenda for a city council meeting within 30 days of the vacancy. Three, the city council may vote on such vacancy, or it may refer the matter to a council committee for a recommendation as to the filling of the vacancy. And four, the vacancy shall be filled by a person eligible to vote in the city of Northampton no later than 60 days of the vacancy. I'm just going to, um, I, I worked with attorney Seewald and Laura um, quite a bit over the last week um, to bring this forward. I'm grateful to both of them for their eagle eyes and languaging um, to make this happen. I just wanted to give a little bit of backstory um, and then we can, we can discuss. Um, so when one of the two elected positions, the person is resigning because they're moving out of the city of North Houston, um, under our charter as a city council responsibility to fill that vacancy. Um, we tried to make the language on this. So we, we need to do that by ordinance. Um, it's now on the council agenda. So we're meeting that requirement. We tried to make this as relatively simple as possible. And part of the reason for that is that right now we have the select committee, um, the city council select committee um, that Councillor Perry and Councillor Gore are serving on uh, to help reduce barriers to service. And so um, we wanted something that was relatively simple that if there were to be another vacancy um, in the future would be relatively easy to change our process um, in order to incorporate recommendations that might come out of that uh, select committee. So as this reads right now, um, we'll advertise, um, we'll use the city um, application through the mayor's office um, you know, to advertise and the Committee on City Services will then take the applications, um, conduct interviews if necessary. Uh, and make a recommendation back to the full council. But I just kind of wanted to explain that piece of the thinking is that this is a very tight uh, turnaround, but there's space in the way that this is written um, to approach it a little bit differently in the future, um, which is one of the stated goals of our council. Yep. Um, and so I would entertain, I don't know if I made that clear or less clear, um, but uh, happy to take questions. Councilor Moulton. Uh, yes, Councilor Foster, thank you for that explanation, which I think was was very clear. In fact, this ordinance is the the piece that um, was required by the Charter Review Committee when we uh, did a lot of housekeeping three years ago on the filling of vacancies, including the CPC. Okay. And um, I, I think, as you explained, that this could be the ordinance uh, is pretty straightforward now and it could be adjusted after the uh, the committee on uh, on uh, uh, looking at uh, 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 the uh, barriers to participation issues its report the only um, the only other thing I would point out is that this mechanism of having the city council uh, fill the vacancy of one of the two elected positions occurs only in only in those situations where there's not another uh, regular city election within 120 days. So if this were happening next year, uh, we would wait until the, uh, the the regular city election. Thank you for that clarification, Councillor. Other councillors. Okay, so in it, in addition to. Well, we have this um, on the agenda for referral. Um, so we just need to determine as a council um, where the ordinance is going to be referred before we see this, see this back as, as well as a process for filling the position. Councilor Jarrett. Um, move that we refer this to legislative matters. Okay, is there a second on that? I'll, I'll, I'll second it. Uh, there's some time, yeah, time so considerations for this, correct? Yes, there is a time consideration. Um, so the vacancy is on, was, is on the agenda within the 30 days. Um, we need to do the appointment within 45 days. So that would be by mid October. Um, will that work with the legislative matters agenda to move that 
to move that through there in that time frame. Councilor Chair. Uh, we meet next for legislative matters on October, Monday, October 3rd. Okay. So we should then be able to make our recommendation and vote on this ordinance on the 6th. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay, so um, we have a motion and a second for referral to legislative matters. Any discussion on that? Okay, Laura, can we do a roll call, please? Sure. Um, Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Maori. Yes. Okay, so that motion pass passes um, seven to zero for referral. Which Councillor process? Foster. Yes. I apologize to inter uh, for interrupting. Okay. I, I, can we go back to the, the home rule petition? It, it occurs to me that we, we did first reading, but we did not refer it anywhere or or send it to the consent agenda, which I think we need to do, don't we? Yes, we do. Um, I think orders typically, don't they appear for a second vote? Although, let, yeah, let's hop back. Um, we do have the option we could refer it. And I guess I, I didn't ask for that. Um, Right. Well, I guess if, if we don't do one or the other, does it just come up at the second reading for a vote without any further discussion? Yes. yes. Okay. So we don't need to refer it. Oh. Okay. That's fine. I just wanted to make sure I, I uh, if it needed to be referred one way or the other. Thank you. I was questioning that too. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Laura, that's correct, right? You because Right. According then, to council rules, then this would ordinances call for need to be ordinance. Right. Okay. Learn something new every day. But to let me make sure matters. our that eyes is. are dotted and our T's are crossed. Do any counselors want to make a referral of that order? Okay. So we'll see it again at our um, October, at our next meeting. I know it feels very, very strange, like something major is hanging in the air. Um, mm -hmm. But I promise we'll see it again and get to vote on it. Okay. That's fine. I just wanted to make, yes. make sure. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Councilor. You. Okay, so that's going to bring us up. Are, how's everybody doing? Are you all okay to keep going here? Yeah. Okay, great. I see lots of thumbs up. That brings us up to item 12. Um, Keith, this is going to be your moment. A22.163, an ordinance relative to parking on New South Street. Um, this is in second reading. Um, and this received a positive recommendation from legislative matters. Keith, would you like to speak to this? Thank you. Uh, thank you for <clears throat> hearing me a second time today. Um, yeah, so a um, uh, resident at New, New South Street Apartments, uh, which is right behind the Academy of Music on the same set of street there. Um, there is no parking uh, on that set of street whatsoever. And on New South Street um, on the whole, there is no accessible parking. And uh, we do have... Um, uh, at least three individuals with mobility impairments uh, who use uh, mobility devices or other um, who live in those apartments. And we just uh, gave, um, the city just gave uh, two years ago, uh, $83,000 in CDBG money to rehab some of those buildings and bring them up, uh, uh, making a little better living situation, but also kind of uh, increased accessibility. Um, and so, Right now, those residents there don't have uh, uh, good accessible parking. There is plenty of accessible parking spaces in the roundhouse parking lot, but now you're asking the person to go from the parking lot and then up the back mm -hmm. uh, of Pulaski Park. Um, so uh, this was uh, brought to the uh, Transportation Parking Committee Commission. Uh, they looked it over and they they approved it, um, but um, after We've kind of I, I kind of looked at this and um, did further analysis on the accessible parking in, in the city, and we are out of compliance. Uh, this will not get us there completely, um, but I'm working with uh, DPW uh, right now and the Parking Commission to fix that. So in the next few months, I hope to be back here with a full picture of that. Uh, but this will help us with that as well. 
Thank you, Keith. Um, Councillors, any questions no. or comments on this? Uh, Councilor Chair. Uh, move approval. Second. Okay, motion made by Councillor Jarrett and seconded by. Oh, I missed it. Was it you, Councillor Mary? No, it's I. It was you, Councillor Lavarge. Okay, I, I see now how hard it is to, to know that. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, and any further discussion? Okay, so um, Laura, if we could take a roll call, please. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Moulton. Yes. Okay, thank you. That that motion passes seven uh, to zero. And that brings us up to, thank you, Keith, um, B22.164, an ordinance relative to parking on State Street. We're here in second meeting on that one. Let's pull that up. Um, in the history, that was referred to legislative matters. We received a positive recommendation from legislative matters. Um, I'm realizing that that's not live linked on the agenda. I think that was a, um, but uh, did anybody, I don't know, Mayor, if you wanted to speak to that, we, we've had a, a chance to speak to it. Legislative matters also made a, a, a recommendation. Okay. Councilor Jerry? I'm happy to speak to it. That'd be great, thank you. Yes, the mayor does. Um, so uh, there, this is, I don't know if, if Laura, if you're able to find the, the map that goes with this. Let um, me look under the legislative but, matters agenda, one second. Okay, yeah. Um, so that, this is a stretch of State Street um, near Michael's house. And it uh, is a, a long stretch that actually uh, there are most of it is not a place where you're able to park anyway because there are uh, numerous driveways um, or it's close to an intersection. Um, so the, the net loss of parking here uh, is just one, one possible space. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, here we can see the map. Um, it clarifies that uh, the, the, play, the one place along here that it is permissible to park and it helps uh, with the sight lines for those who are exiting um, the driveway uh, <clears throat> from uh, Michael's house and um, by eliminating uh, one possible place where one could have parked before, but that wasn't uh, striped. So essentially we're, we're only losing one parking uh, space here. Thank you, Councillor Jarrett. Um, Councillors, any discussion on this? Okay, so we'll take a, oh, Mayor? I, I can just, as a resident of State Street, um, I can just share how hard it is to pull out onto State Street and, um, and when there are cars and that interrupts your sight line, um, it can be really dangerous. So I just wanted to give my own personal experience a little bit farther down State Street um, that, you know, any, and, and there is a lot of action right around there. And of course um, we want it to be safe for Michael's house. So uh, that's just my own anecdotal experience with uh, similar situations. Great. Thank you, Councilor Elkins. And I would just echo as a, uh, my office is right there at the corner of uh, State and Trumbull. And uh, we have a front row seat uh, to many accidents at that intersection uh, easily once a week. Um, so it's it's a dicey stretch of road. And, and this I think this will be any, anything that's sort of calms and mitigates and uh, improves sight lines around there will be welcome and it uh, and, uh, is necessary. Thank you, Councilor Labarge. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to move this ordinance. Second. Okay, I think uh, so. The motion made by Councilor Labarge, seconded by Councilor Moulton, would be um, for approval, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Okay, Laura, can we do a roll call? Sorry, just. It's okay. Trying to unmute. Am I unmuted? I am. Yeah, okay. you are. Uh, Councilor Elkins. 
Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Uh oh. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Uh -oh. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Perry. Yes. Okay, so that motion passes seven to zero. And that brings us up to item C, 22.165, an ordinance relative to fire lanes. Well, this is on second reading and it's been referred to legislative matters. I just wanna read um, this note here on the history. After further review, DPW Director Donna Lascalia stated that the ordinance does not reflect all fire lanes that have been designated. There are 15, not the one being added. She asked legislative matters to recommend to council that it table, postpone, continue, whichever word we would like to use, mm -hmm. action to allow the sponsor to propose an amendment. Um, so that was requested on September 12th, mm -hmm. 2022. Um, so my proposal is that we do table, postpone, or continue um, this discussion. Um, but before we do that, uh, if any counselor wanted to speak to that, I wanted to create space for that too. Okay, so this will return to a future council agenda. Laura, we don't need to vote on that, right? No. Okay, great. I just yeah, come back. All right, I promise you'll see this again. Um, so um, item 13, zoning ordinances, we do not have any. We don't have any information requests, which brings us to item 15, new business. Did any counselors have any new business to discuss tonight? All right. Um, and that brings us to item 17. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilor Jarrett and seconded by Councilor Labarge. There's no discussion on adjournment. So we can do a roll call. Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor Jarrett. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Maori. I heard a very faint yes. There. Oh, so yes. <laughs> yeah, I think Bolton. my sound's a little faint for some reason. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Perry. Yes. And Councillor Elkins. Yes. Okay, so that motion passes seven to zero and we are adjourned. Thank you very much.